Hey, this is Ricardo Suave, and you're watching Big Stone Television. Don't you move a muscle. Big Stone stands alone. Whoa! Ha, I told you. A very pleasant good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome once again to Big Stone Television as you know the series continues the series of those great singers and players of instruments and also record producers who have paved the way for reggae music and helped to bring reggae music to the four corners of the earth today I'm going to be talking about one of our all-time great record producer, Henry Junja Laws. Henry Junja Laws was born in the Waterhouse District of Kingston, Jamaica. Started his career in the business singing in a group called Grooving Locks. Response was poor and he switched to producing. After a short period, working as an assistant producer for Linville Thompson, releasing his first productions on Thompson Sound and Jal Life, he teamed up with upcoming artist Barrington Levy. The success of this collab was enormous, with hits such as Collie Weed, Shine I Gal, and Lookin' My Love. The resulting album, Bounty Hunter, was a landmark in the development of the early dance hall. He set up his own labels, Volcano and Jack Guidance and the rival. He also founded the highly popular sound system, Volcano. He started working with Roots Radix and a young engineer scientist. They were responsible for the sound on the majority of its releases. His roster of artists included Michael Prophet, General Echo, Little John, Toyan, Barry Brown, Josie Wales, Eka Mouse, Nicodemus, Frankie Paul, Dan Carlos, Hugh Mundell, Linville Thompson, Captain Sinbad, Michigan and Smiley, and the man who was reggae's figurehead during the first half of the 1980s, Yellow Man. He was also pivotal in the reawakening the careers of several veteran artists. Former Paragon member John Holt scored big with Police in Helicopter and Sweetie Come Brush Me, while Studio One veteran Johnny Hasburn charted with Folly Lover and Ice Cream Love. Alton Ellis, Earl Sixteen, Leroy Smart, Junior Mervyn, Ken Booth and Al Campbell were among other artists who benefited from Junja's producing capabilities. The Wailing Soul started out in the late 1960s and under the wings of Junja they boosted their career in the early 1980s with some heavy duty 12 inch singles and outstanding albums. He was ahead of his time with the concept of two artists clashing on one album and the launching of albums of live dancehall sessions. A stable cooperation with Greensleeve Records, who released nearly all of his material for the European market gave him international exposure. 
1985, he relocated to New York, missing out the new wave of digital reggae and dancehall rhythms that swept Jamaica. He took up producing with up and coming talents like Ninja Man, Shaka Shamba, and General TK. On the 14th of June, 1999, he was shot dead in a drive-by shooting in Arles Den, Northwest London. The case remain unsolved. Henry Chandra Laws. First, as is customary, we we'll always offer our condolences to the family of Henry Chandra Laws. What a remarkable human being Henry Chandra Laws was. A remarkable talent. Great ear to reggae music and dance on music. We offer our sincerest of condolences to his families, friends, and many fans. And if Henry Chandra Laws could hear me, I would say thank you, Henry, for such a remarkable genre of music that you have given us with some of the greatest of the greats who are still doing great, fantastic work in reggae music today. Thank you, sir, for a job well done. You came, you saw, and you definitely conquer. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the remarkable, the legendary, the iconic, Henry Junja Laws. Please like and share this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, now is the most appropriate time to do so. Thank you so much for watching.